Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Well, folks, as you know, um, we've got a presidential election coming up in 2012. The president will be seated. However, there's been all sorts of issues that have been out on the table here. And so what I thought I would do in this particular segment is give you sort of an update on all of the political actions uh, to date. And uh, we'll, we'll, from a national perspective, and maybe we might do some things from a local perspective. But, but, the, but the major focus will be from a national perspective. And uh, I, I know of no one uh, within our midst here in Oregon that, could, that was, was more prepared, if you will, to talk about these issues uh, because, of, because of the fact uh, uh, he's been involved in, in, uh, in the political landscape for a number, number of years. In fact, uh, i just give you a little brief on Mr. Chad Dedham. He's a local businessman, but he's run for office in the state. He's ran for state representative here in the, in the city of Portland, uh, actually state of Oregon, but, but here in the, in, the, in the metro area aspect of it. He's been very much involved in, uh, in presidential, can uh, presidential uh, races and the like and whatever. But he's, been, you know, he's well read along that line. I would say that uh, uh, I'd be a couple notches above uh, normally any uh, along along that same line among any uh, someone else, but but he, we we run about the, we run about par so to speak, you know. But uh, anyway, Chad, I, th welcome. I think you're superior. Oh no, no, by no means, Chad. Absolutely. Welcome aboard, buddy. Uh, thank you so good, very good, much. good. How's the family? Everybody's going well. Good, good, Everybody's good, good, well. good, good. Well, as you know, um, there's been all sorts of talks of late. You know, I mean, it's sort of gearing up. You know, I mean, we. Uh, the primary is not going to be hitting up until about next year sometime uh, after the May aspect of it, but, but it's really gearing up. And more specifically, the, uh, the Republican candidates who are basically running to, uh, as they say, to, to, to run against uh, the sitting president, President Obama. And there are a number of folks who are running for office at this point in time, and, and uh, they're, they're, they're making all of the caucuses around the, around the country in that matter and whatever. So. So anyway, so a lot of things have been happening, and, and the, naturally these folks are being vetted all along during mm -hmm. that particular time. They're being vetted, because that's realistically what the, what the settings are when they're actually being, being uh, be presented, Absolutely. if you will, to, to the various, uh, various entities around the various states. And uh, so some interesting things have been coming up. But uh, just, just as a kind of a, a, a prerequisite to this whole discussion aspect of it, uh, both you and I, we've talked about this issue before, but the fact that uh, uh, America's first elected African American to the presidency of, of these United States, what, what was your feel when you, when one, not only when he ran, but when he ran, when, not only when he ran, but when he was ultimately elected to, to that particular office? What did you feel in your mind that he brought to the table as it relates to this country and the, and the issues that were, that were, were were with us during that particular time. I wish, uh, in a lot of ways, I could say elated mm -hmm. um, because he was an African American. Um, I really didn't feel that from that perspective. I was excited about him as a candidate. I thought he was bright, he was refreshing. I thought he had the right kind of mix. Um, he was a model in terms of how a a black man and a black woman and their children should be from that perspective. But I, th I thought it was par for the course because, as you know, Bruce, we've always believed that who got the best goods step up and take mm -hmm. a bat. Mm -hmm. And I've always believed in that kind of thing. And I still do believe that the best man should win. And if he happens to be an African American or a woman or Hispanic or Asian or a southern white man who has, you know, uh, nigger heads on his property. That's mm -hmm. what it is. Which we would talk about. Which is which is which is which is what it is. Mm -hmm. I don't think he is, but I'm just saying, if that mm -hmm. being the case, mm -hmm. so be it. Mm -hmm. um, and I and, and so I still believe that from from not just a philosophical perspective, but in a practical, empirical kind of way, that's what we should be doing. And I think the the conversation in America has stiffened that because we've gotten into po po personality politics to such a degree. You know, I was pretty early when I said I could not stand. Um, um, uh, Sarah Palin, I thought it was a bad decision. Mm -hmm. um, uh, her alone on that ticket, I could not vote for it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, 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 and a lot of people looked at me and said, you know, she's a Republican. I said, no, she is not a Republican, as I know it to be. And we're beginning to see that fallout now. We're in the, 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 the pretenders of the throne are now uh, hiding under this whole mask of fiscal responsibility. And even Cheney said this, and most people didn't catch that. You know, Cheney is a scholar. He said, who cares about deficits? Because deficits is not how we run this country. We run the country based upon a number of factors. That's one in a myriad of, of economic tools in the tool shed. So, so I, think, I think from my perspective, I look at it from a little broad base, but I was excited about this young, bright guy who talked about change in kind of like, not just in an ephemeral kind of way, but in a practical kind of sense that we are now moving forward. Well, you know, some, someone, some have said also, too, that what he, because that was my initial thought when he, when he was elected, in fact, the issue of race, he brought that to the table. So that was my major thrust, if you will, along that line. Do you feel that um, race was, in fact, an issue, and now, in fact, uh, there are some resolutions to that issue, you think, at this point in time? Well, as you know, Bruce, I'm kind of a weird one because I don't necessarily believe in this. Race is only one race of people. Right. It's a okay. human race. Right. Um, only a tree or a dog can call a human being a racist. Okay. So I'm kind of unique, but I do believe in ethnocentrism, and I do think we've gotten to the point where we have become so ethnocentric that we've lost the whole purpose of accepting other pieces, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, the only difference for most people is the food they eat or the way they may twang a guitar. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people are basically people. Mm -hmm. In that regard, I, I'm in total agreement with uh, with the late Dr. King that you know that we're all God's creatures and we're part of that creation. So now that I've said that, I think the problem has become that we've become so bifurcated in our in our ethnicities and mm -hmm. our sexualism that we forgot about it's the United States of America. Mm -hmm which means you, me, and everybody else, we're part of that. And when a president is elected, he is the guy we get behind. And I, I as a Republican, and I'm talking about my daddy was Republican, you know. His daddy was Republican. He was from North Carolina. And in North Carolina had a whole cadre of African-American Republicans. I was totally dismayed with the notion that, you know, my Kentucky fellow Republican made the comment that my number one job is to eliminate him from becoming a second term of president. And you're talking about Mitt McConnell now, right? You know, to me, I mean, I, I just, I just, you know, if it's, 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 it should it should me because, you know, I supported Bill Clinton when he became president. I said I gave the same argument because of Bill Clinton. I remember. You know, one of my uh, dear friends, uh, who was an Arkansasian, Willie Stoudemire, who was very much for Bill Clinton, said, "Well, you know," I said, "He's still my president too. Mm -hmm. I don't care whether he is elected. You, right. He's elected, and I want to support him because if he does well, that means I can do well." Mm -hmm. And I think we've 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 gotten to the point that what the notion is that the ethnicity of someone or where they live, if they went to Harvard and one went to Yale or one went to Oregon State is not valid. To me, that we've gotten to that point where it now is, it's become so gangified. We're talking about these gangs on the street, the gangs in Washington. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the nonsense that, that some of these people, the, particularly the Tea Partiers and they, they, uh, gang, that gangsterism, which now, you know, even when it came to the most basic pub, human, uh, public services, gov governmental services, it came down to, well, you know, we, we got to do this and that, because to hurt the president. Mm -hmm. You know, those people, in those drought, uh, the, the, that, that uh, hurricane zone, they don't care. They're trying to figure out how they're going to eat tomorrow, how they're going to get some decent water, how they're going to clean up their homes. But for someone to make it a political issue as opposed to getting there and, and making it happen, to me, it's abominable. And I think, you know, uh, you, you, people are spending all this, this time talking about, you know, millionaires and billionaires talking about we got to cut. Their lifestyle is not being impacted. And, and when I say that, it's not a class issue. But then it is a class issue, because if you understand the, the argument of class, the class is that, and this now we're talking logic now, we're not mm -hmm. talking, you know, it's a logistic argument. Mm -hmm. A class of people is based upon the people who fit that card. For example, everybody who went to Cleveland High School is in a class. Mm -hmm. Everybody who went to Jefferson High School is in a class. Everybody who went to Lincoln High School, everybody who went to Grant is in a class. 
Now, there's some other class references. How much money you make, you know, uh, did you go to college? All these are classes that determines pretty much how we eat, slit, live, or where we may go, even the car we drive. You know, that's why mm -hmm. how marketers, as you know, as a business mm -hmm. people, that's how they market, that segment of market they talk about. So for us to, to talk about class warfare in that kind of sense, when we're not using an integrative model, mm -hmm. is insane. <laughs> and, 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 and uh, you know, it's, a, it's something that I really have a problem with, particularly when you start talking about the challenges. You know, uh, and I argue with, uh, I've always argued with, with uh, during the Laffer years, you know, during the Reagan years with Laffer, I agree, I'm, a, I'm based on supply sider. But that's in a, a situation where you, you, sometimes you may be supply, sometimes you may be, you know, a, 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 a Canadian. Mm -hmm. In any business, and I think, believe it or not, who said it very interestingly, and, I, and it really piqued my interest, when Mitt Romney said this, he said, Nobody can be an ideologue in business. He's right. Hmm. You have to adjust to the environment based upon the facts. I guess he used the Wilson, uh, Winston Churchill, that his opinion is based upon fact, not opinion for the sake of opinion. Now, that's not a direct quote, but that's the essence of mm -hmm. it. I think what we, we, what we have done, and it's almost got to the point where it's irreversible, where we say, well, if you said back in 19 such and such this, then it must be that today. And that tells me, you're gonna tell me all the education I've gone through and all the study and all the reading I've done is predicated on something I said when I was uh, immature. Maturity is an is a, is a ongoing process. <laughs> so so, so I'm, I'm just troubled by these, these, these absolutes. And, and, and I, and I wanna go back to that question of, of logic. You know, uh, always is in the general Sometimes it's specific. <laughs> and so, you know, um, there's a season, the scripture tells us, Ecclesiastes tells us, there's a season for everything. Mm -hmm. So sometimes in that season you need to cut. In a season you may need to, what? Add. And if you just take, you know, being, you know, my family, old tobacco farmers, mm -hmm. you, you find out something about that there's time to plant, there's time to water, and it's time to harvest. Okay. Well, then on that particular note. Okay. Again, I'm sorry. I, I, got, no, 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 I, I, got, I got carried away. No, I, hope, fact, I hope I didn't no, in take fact, that's, too far that's from why, That's why I have you here. You know, because that. the whole idea is to try to try to make some sense, especially during these particular times. Yeah. There's, there's so much that's being, that's being given out to the public. And a lot of times you really don't have access to the, to the, to the total media. And everybody's doing their own thing, if you will. They're selling print. In some cases, they're selling video, but the, but the point I'm making here is that uh, uh, the point I'm making here is that uh, uh, we need to have these kinds of discussion from a layman's standpoint. Just break it down in terms of where we are today in this whole piece. It's going to get heavy before it gets lighter. Okay, well, sure. you know what I'm saying. And then along that particular line, as you can see, that like you, like myself, I've. I've been looking at all of the various debates and things of that nature, and, and also every so often you, you know for a fact that none of these people are going to be vetted on both sides, the aisles for that matter. President Obama, even though he's president, he's being vetted again, you know. Sure. They're, they're calling him the Antichrist, you know. That, that, that I thought that was kind of an interesting piece, the Antichrist aspect of it. They still are talking to the fact of the matter is that he wasn't born in these United States, okay. And uh, just recently, for instance, uh, there was another situation with reference to Perry when, when uh, Governor Perry uh, from Texas got into the race. You know, he got into the race and all of a sudden he's being vetted. And one of the things that, um, that came up uh, just recently for that matter, and, and I was actually looking for it in the Oregonian and some of the local newspapers, was the fact that they said that uh, he and his family had a, had a ranch in, in Texas. And uh, uh, at the front of the ranch and the gate as you enter the ranch, on a big rock right in the front of the, the gate there in the entrance there, uh, there was a, uh, it was, there was a painted, uh, paint, painted on this rock was nigger head, nigger head ranch, nigger head, yeah. okay? And uh, it was kind of interesting, and, and, and as you know, and I know, we, we were looking at all of the talk shows today, Meet the Press and Face the Nation and Fox News, they're all talking about the, this, this, this quote, this, this, this statement or whatever on this rock, because they said nigger head. 
and uh, and it was interesting that when they interviewed Kane, as you know, they interviewed Kane because he he picked up the uh, the straw poll up in Florida, right? Mm -hmm. And naturally, I.E. Uh, I think it was Mike Wallace. Uh, yeah, Wallace was was basically interviewing him, and uh, and, was, and was trying to go through this whole piece about the rock and whatever. He said, "Well, that was this in on this rock." And uh, and and Herman Cain, you know, just jumped right. I said, wait a minute, let's 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 let's, let's put out the facts on the table. It said nigger head. That's what it said on the rock, nigger head. Mm -hmm. And it caught Wallace a little bit by surprise. And and Wallace said, well, what do you think about that? Well, it's, it's, it, it shouldn't have been said. It was the sensitivity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But but again, I'd like to get your response. How did you feel when when you know, I know you heard some of the discussions along this time. But in Texas, uh, here, here's a guy running for president of the United States, governor of Texas, and has been on that rock for a number of years. The first thing that came to my mind is that how many people visited, how many people did he have visited that, that, uh, that ranch, and how many people? I, I'd surely like to see uh, the, 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 uh, the guest list that was going to that <laughs> to, to that to that deal. I, I, I don't think uh, President Bush would have visited because they, they're, they're not buddies now. That's, that's my understanding. They're not buddies. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? What, what was your, what was your feeling when you? Well, when I you thought it was unfortunate. Okay. Um, um, and when I say unfortunate, because you know, um, um, you know, being born a Southern boy, just like you, a Southern yeah, boy, you yeah. from from uh, Louisiana and Texas, and I'm from Carolinas. Um, that's not something you don't play with. You know, I think three or four years ago, there was a young man who was dragged down the street. Exactly. And then in my own personal uh, uh, life, I had an older brother who was um, um, literally uh, murdered by someone. Right here in Portland. Right here in Portland, right on MLK, it was Union Avenue those days, over that whole issue of ethnicity, of domain of ethnicity. So I'm sensitive toward that situation, and it, and and I always try to play that down. Uh, now I would have never gone to Niggerhead Ranch mm -hmm. because if I understand the innuendo, uh, you <laughs> might be the one that's being hunted. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, and so I understand these um, coded messages. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, so I, I, I don't support it at all, and I think it's inappropriate. But I would have the same problem if it was, you know, a negative, any ethnic mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. I would have a problem with it because now you have objectified somebody. And once you objectify something, you, you take away their humanity. Mm -hmm. Then it's very easy to take that next step of destruction. Mm -hmm. And then we need to be, you know, moving away from that model. Mm -hmm. right, well, what about the fact that... Uh, they didn't have that in the press here locally. What, what do you what do you make of that? The largest paper in the in the in the state of Oregon, the Oregonian. I looked all over the place for it, but I, I saw nothing. Well, I think the story just broke on know, Washington right? weekend, and you know, and I think, you know, I think probably you'll probably see something come up next week. I, you know, I hope so. But here's the issue here. Um, um, you know, um, politics on a national level, but D.C. is like a fast running stream. You know, Oregon's a little bit more slower. Um, you know, a lot of people feel like in Oregon we don't have those problems. Um, um, but it's a different kind of niggerhead ranch, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have that same kind of problem we're in, particularly if you are a black male who is uh, want to take care of himself and be uh, self-sustaining. You, you are the target. And so... Um, uh, a black woman has a little bit easier, not not that much easier, but easier. But that's why we have such problems with our young black male youth, and everybody's trying to save them, which I understand. You know, I have a young man, 20 yeah. years old now, mm -hmm. who uh, we're uh, constantly trying to make sure that he doesn't get fall into a negative category, because mm -hmm. it's easy. Mm -hmm. It's easy to give up, mm -hmm. and it's been a challenge for us last year, year and a half. But certainly that's part of the process, because I went through it when I was a young man as well. I had, had, you have to overcome those things. So right. when you start talking about these kind of things, it moves into what's called the political landscape. But nobody wants to talk about that because it's painful. Mm -hmm. And and frankly, even the, the fact that on your show today, I can even talk about that. There was for 20 years, I couldn't even talk about it still. I, it took me 20 years. That's your brother? But my brother, to get to the point where I could talk to it without having a, an emotional breakdown mm -hmm. about it. So, so these things are deep. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, as I'm also reminded of the fact, and, and again, I, I too have a, a Republican. I, 
I've always made it a point that I was a Lincoln Republican of late. Absolutely. And to educate, if you will, and the whole idea was for folks to go back in history and look at the Republican Party during Lincoln to talk to the contributions of African Americans during that particular time and what was happening. And, um, and you know, you, when, when people don't, for some strange reason, they just don't want to go back in time. Well, that, we don't have to go that far. We can go back to Eisenhower. Okay. We can go back to Eisenhower, who, who spawned Edwin Brooke out of, out of, out of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Senator Dirksen out of Illinois. An African American. African American, you know, the first you know, yeah. uh, African American senator mm -hmm. uh, since Reconstruction. Um, so, so there is there is a, a history. Mark Hatfield in the state of Oregon. Some of the things he did here with, with breaking down the, the the barriers and some of the work that was done. Uh, um, um, I, I think even a lot of the t titles we get into progressives versus conservatives. You know, I think most of these people have not really even understood the concept because what they what they call conservatism. Oftentimes, not conservatism, and a lot of times, what people call progressive is regressive. And so, so because their actions and what it actually ends up doing in terms of implementation and policy becomes those things. Um, uh, 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 so, you know, if you ask me, as being somewhat of a linguist, 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 I would say that we need to redirect some of our language because what people call themselves, the title they call themselves. Mm -hmm sometimes does not meet the standard. And if you're on either side of the extreme of any piece, oftentimes you're never what you purport it to be. <laughs> Interesting. Well then, I guess there were some other things, and like I said, you, you, you have the opportunity because in fact we're having these debates and each are vying for, for various positions and whatever. And, um, and I noticed that on several of the debates uh, where the public was invited, and uh, announcements were made, for instance, like the don't ask, don't tell, that uh, the president basically was able to say, okay, fine, we're just going to have them just be troops just like anyone else. And that announcement was made, and folks were, were laughing about that piece. Remember that? Sure. And so that piece aspect of it. Or booing. Yeah, or booing, booing. I yeah. mean, publicly booing. Yeah. Or, or um, uh, a military person, if you will, uh, that had been wounded or whatever in the military, and then they were booing that because of, of this medical attention aspect of it. And that's, I resented that because having spent uh, the time that I spent in the Corps, you know, and, 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 and all the, I, I'm glad I wasn't there. Sure. Uh, I might have said something. Uh, no, I'm sure you would you know. <laughs> I'd have been disappointed <laughs> you know, in that. I, I would have said something big Absolutely. time. And fortunately, and luckily, he wasn't a. A, a former Marine, because I would have just gotten on a plane and went down there. Yeah, no, you know I'm, I'm, I, I, understand, you know I understand. But anyway, but but it, it just bothers me that 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 kind of an attitude exists uh, in the party. Now, all Republicans are not like that, you know. Oh, absolutely. You know? The majority of them. Not. No, they're definitely not. I mean, that. I mean, for the most part, you know. Republicans, and these are just delegates to the, the, that particular the, the, environment. The, 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 majority, the media takes advantage the, of that. That's why I talked about the word progressive. Most Republicans are very progressive people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, uh, they believe in individual initiative. Quite naturally, they see government sometimes as a hindrance, and in some instances where it becomes too over overarching. Um, and 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 Bruce, you and I, as being developers and people of dealing real estate and building, we can see where in a lot of this stuff is very regressive. What the city city does and the state does in terms of land and land use issues, um, um, and so so at some point it does sometimes gets overbearing. But I'd rather have it yeah. than not have it. And and I and I thought and I forget who said this quote. Who I heard say that it's hard to be a millionaire in Bangladesh, hmm. but it's easy to be a millionaire in in, in America. Hmm. And because government helps, and and I think you know I I had a chance to speak to you I think what six weeks ago, mm -hmm. where I talked about there's a relationship between public and private. They're one and the and the same. Mm -hmm. You know people talk winners and losers. They're being picked every day. Now the question becomes: Does ethnicity get in the way where, you, where certain communities get, that does not get the proper sprinkling, and that's where the leadership issue comes into yeah. place. And 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 that's why I've argued with a lot of people in in, in our community, particularly in Oregon, who who uh, believe nonprofits was the way to access capital, which is not. And the people who had made investments and who were you know, trying to create a, a business, an enterprise for them, family themselves, and wealth creation was set to the side. And so what would happen is, and this is where the bigotry comes in, you know, the establishment says, okay, well, you know, the Urban League or the Black United Front or the NAACP, which as you know, I was 
one of the first black Republicans head of the, in Oregon, they get a, a slice more so of attention than the guys who does the private. I have yes. nobody, I have no one vetting. That's why I kind of relate to what Herman Cain was talking about, the um, the um, brainwashing. Yeah, you made I, th I think that was an 80 to 90 percent of it. I think that was unfortunate, but I understood. Well, you made a point. No, 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 it was a valid point in yeah. terms of trying to change the mindset mm. of trying to get people to understand investments, how to uh, become vested in a society, how to have a business, how to be an employer, and how to employ, and then people who your your employees learn how to work for it. You know, most a lot of African Americans have difficulties working for African Americans. Mm -hmm. I've experienced this. You've experienced it. If, 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 and I have not spoken to Herman Cain personally, but I guarantee you we're talking about, as you know, I was president of the National Business League of Oregon and on the board of the National Business League of Oregon. And that was, I mean, of, uh, of the National Business League on a national level. Um, and that was one of the issues we always talked about. That was hard to get our folks to work for us um, because uh, they always thought, the, you know, everybody else's ice was colder than our own. Um, but, you know, those are some real issues that we have to be challenged to learn how to work with each other and have self-respect for one of each, each other. At the same time, you know, uh, just because I have an opportunity to have a business, I can't run around and act like I'm better than anybody else. And that's, that's one of the problems I think, too, happens on our side of the equation. We begin to start having superiority complexes. And so, we, it's, so it's, it's a balanced approach. Okay. Let's get back to this other I'm piece sorry, about, I'm, no, no, it's okay. off again. I'm about sorry. Her, again, uh, folks, uh, from your view and audience here, you know, I'm talking with Mr. Dedham. And basically, we're just giving you an update. There's going to be a number of updates, if you yeah. will, because uh, we're taking the opportunity that we're taking advantage, if you will, of this situation because during these debates and situations, things get vetted. Oh, and sure. you learn sure. things, you know sure. what I'm saying? Sure. And so, and by the way, um, uh, the fact that uh, uh, Herman Cain, i.e. a businessman, uh, was able to um, uh, take the straw poll in Florida was historical. That was the first. I've never, I've not known of someone and in Florida. I mean, but, but, that, you, but you know, my view is geez. every election is historical. Oh, geez. and I and I give no special credence because he's African American. Yeah, the fact of the matter is, he may be the right man at the mm -hmm. right time, and if he if he is, then we should move with mm -hmm. him. Um, as you know, um, um, I initially my initial responses to him uh, were, were somewhat muted. I was, you know. Uh, like a lot of the other folks, Muslim, they didn't, they didn't the Muslim statement, yeah, yeah, okay. and some of the things that he and what said. What was that statement, by the way? Just for the again. For well, the he made a comment that he would not permit a Muslim to be in his administration; he wouldn't mm -hmm. give him a job, and that bothered me because I'm saying, you know, that's almost like saying somebody, if they were, you know, you know, black, mm -hmm. you wouldn't give him a job. Mm -hmm. But after hearing him, I, I started understanding what he was what he was saying in mm -hmm. essence about that he wouldn't hire someone who was. You know, kind of an you know a uh, terrorist. Mm -hmm. So I, I, that helped me the other day when I saw him uh, break that down yeah. about that point, and, and it, it, tr it troubled me. But but I but I and I don't know about the nine 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 thing because I'm not a tax. And we'll talk a little attorney. bit more about that about but, what that nine. But, but it's just but, a but, but, but flat it's a, tax. But, it, but, it's, flat but tax. it's an interesting notion yeah. in terms of of what it would do. And he says it's revenue neutral. If it's revenue neutral, if it's going to put more money into the pot. If it's going to free up investments, yeah. the only problem I have is that 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 folks who take money out of the country for investments should pay a higher piece to bring it back to help pay for infrastructure. Good point. I tell you what we'll do. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to be back with Mr. Denham. And what we're going to do also is is give you an opportunity to be a part of this conversation. And we're going to open up the line. We're going to do, talk a little bit about 15 minutes, and we'll open up the line the last 15 minutes of the show. Okay, again, I'm Bruce Broussard, and my guest is Chad Denham, a local businessman, and we're talking about giving you a little update on the political landscape. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back with you. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
Welcome back, folks. Again, I'm Bruce Broussard, your host of the Oregon Voters Digest. My guest today is, is businessman Chad Dedenham. Uh, and uh, we're just sort of giving you an update of the upcoming uh, political whatever fray and whatever we're having. And and we just kind of like talking and, and getting his opinion, getting my opinion, and, and hopefully we're going to be getting your opinion. And I would suggest very strongly that I realize that this, the media stuff is really hitting you on all levels, radio, TV, and print media. And it can get very confusing. That's why we're doing this, to try to give you a feel for, for what we're, uh, an opinion. But we, we, we access this stuff. That's what we do. Perspective. We're a perspective aspect of it. Okay. So anyway, we, we just left uh, talking about this, that, and the other. We were talking a little bit more about Herman Cain, who, who had just picked up the straw poll vote in Florida, which was, as far as I'm concerned, was historical. And uh, it's kind of interesting uh, how the media is handling it. They, they really did, it just caught them by surprise, Chad. They, they just didn't know how to handle it. And in some cases, uh, you know, normally when a person picks it up that way, I mean, and beating the two top runners, you know, both both in both uh, Perry, Governor Perry, and Governor Romney. I mean, I mean, hey, he, he was right up there. And in Florida, and as a result of that, Florida, is my understanding, has, um, has, has moved up, if you will, that, that primary to, to January. Mm. And that's going to be interesting to see because that's going to be one of the leading, if you will, uh, 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 notice if you're a denominator because the fact of the matter is you got that's where the that's the senior citizen wealth capital of the world right sure, there in sure, Florida. Sure. And if sure. all of a sudden he wins that primary, it's going to be an issue. They're going to have to take him serious. Well, point. Well, yeah, I think I think uh, if you look at McCain, you know, f four years ago, um, he was not as a strong as position as 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 Kane is now. But let me you know, here's the issue for me and, and and I know a lot of people probably take umbrage with, with my position, but I believe when you t filter out all of the media stuff, all of the assumptions, all the stereotypic stuff, mm -hmm. and you get down to really hearing what makes sense. Because we've all been challenged in mm -hmm. that respect. Cause sometimes it's hard for people to get beyond the you know uh, the, the darker brother thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's hard for them to get beyond that. But when you get past that, and you start hearing what a person is saying, that's why I think what they're hearing from from Cain, they're hearing a, an authentic voice, practicality, and 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 and, and that auth authenticity is really what is driving the equation. Right, right, right. right. And, uh, and, well, and, uh, and, President and, Obama does the same well, thing. And, and, same. and frankly, I, I am somewhat surprised that people don't understand that. Anybody who gets the president of the United States, or the first two years, <laughs> is going to be tough. <laughs> and for them to expect for him, and this is one of the problems I think we all they expect. Uh, excuse, after, excuse me, sure. Carl. Hold on just for a second. I'm going to get this point across. And we'll be right with you. Okay. A lot of times, what happens? They expect an African American to immediately make changes nobody else can make. Yeah. And I think that whole Superman complex needs to be addressed. And as long as I think, even with, with Barack Obama. That's what he has to. You know, one thing I want to do real quick before I get this caller aspect of it is that uh, there was another area that I'd want to just chat with you about and ask your opinion about is the Cornell West, Dr. West, and Tavis Smiley. You know, Tavis I'm, is I'm right troubled there. by that. And I'm troubled by what, that. What's, what's the because reason? I think that's one of the reasons what the real problem with the Democratic Party on his first now, two years. They were in opposition. That's right. President I Obama. think there was a lot of opposition toward him in his own party. Uh, you know, sometimes they're talking about what Republicans are doing with their bigotry mm -hmm. and their ethnicism. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that even the Democrats got to answer that question as well, mm -hmm. because they had a majority. And I was very disappointed, oftentimes, some of the nonsense I was hearing from Democrats. I, I was silent on that issue. Mm -hmm. But on the other side of that equation, you know, uh, the Democrats can, really has to have to blame themselves what happened in the, in the midterm elections. Good, good. They didn't do their job. Okay. Let's go on and take a call in, too, whatever. Calling on the air, your question or comment, please. Are you there? Yes. Bruce, yeah. can yes. you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes. Going on. This is your favorite uh, Lincoln Democrat here. All right. And uh, I got to say, I appreciate the conversation. Thank you, sir. And I'd like to thank you. As Bruce knows, I am a Democrat. Yes. That I actually voted for him once. And you brought up one of my favorite Republicans of all times was Mark Hatfield. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really appreciate you pointing out that we've got to put this, excuse the expression, crap behind us mm -hmm. mm. and uh, start taking a look at the country and how we can make things better for everybody. Absolutely. I wanted to start my own tea party. 
Yes. <laughs> but my tea party was take everybody along. Yeah, good. Bruce, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you very, very much, sir. And by the way, I've got to get you on this show. You know, we've got we used to get together quite a, quite a bit. Now we're gonna get 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 Gillespie and sit down and chat for a minute. Is that fair? I think it's gone. Okay, you know, now, okay. Joe, can I make a comment to that? You know, when you start looking at 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 the Real issue quickly. about people living in the living in the past, you know, I've always been told if you're driving your car and you're looking at your rear view mirror all the time, you're going to have an accident. And that's what's happened with the Tea Party. they got to get out of that rear view mirror and start looking out the front of that mirror. Okay. All right. Let's take another caller. Calling on the air. Your question or comment, please. This is bizarre. Yes, sir. Oh, what a wonderful program. Thank you, sir. Another. I, I mean, you've got Chad on there. And I, I tell you, uh, Chad has done so many things in this community. I remember when he was a, the business manager for uh, a really great uh, R&B group called Pleasure. But beyond that, I can see just with the discourse that you all are sharing with the public, my goodness, he needs to become a publisher of a newspaper because I think through his lens, we can understand the lay of the land much better. Uh, you're talking politics, but you're also talking uh, lifestyle and how you can live and achieve a better life. And uh, I also appreciate his history with uh, his struggle to talk about his brother, uh, his murder on Union Avenue, and, and that whole piece ties in with the gentrification mm -hmm. on some level as well. But uh, Bruce, you need to really consider having Mr. Chad on periodically as a um, a guest host because he brings a, a critical point to what you've already established on your program. So thank you very much, bro, for uh, being there. Peace. Gene, thank you very, very much. And by the way, I'm gonna I'm gonna get that commitment from him too. I'm gonna get him on the show. See, he he's a he's a he's a pioneer in his own rights, and he's got a, he's got background, and and I've got a lot of respect for for Gene's background. It's, 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 it's appreciated. It really yes, is. Thank you very much. Okay. Sir. Looks like we got another caller. Calling on the air. Your question or comment, please. Yes, caller, you're on the air. Hey, Bruce. Uh, both to you and both to you and Chad. Hi, Bob. How you doing, Bob? Uh, and to follow uh, two young men uh, that I uh, really respect. Uh, one one that I worked with for many years, and another one that I play golf with on a regular basis. <laughs> I got you, buddy. And you two uh, Republicans, uh, where I'm the Democrat, uh, we have had our dis disagreements over time. But one thing I can say is that I respect your opinions, and I, and I respect what you're doing today and what you're saying. And we have to do something in regards to uh, Tavis Smiley and uh, Cornell West because it's division. It, and they are dividing not only uh, those in the Democratic Party, but they are saying some things that will be long-standing for any African American that attempts to run, and and they're setting a bad president. So I say to you guys, keep up the good work, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in a few days. Thank you very much, Bob. Appreciate that very much. And uh, Bob, as you know, has been a long-standing. Uh, uh, and, a strong demo, and a strong Democrat. And a strong Democrat. Hey, he, a strong Democrat. He makes no, and, and, we, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. See, I think. And that's it, why we have the show that I way. Think, I think it's critical that we understand that there are issues, and we should be talking about issues about how to make it better. If I spend time making it a personal vindictive process in the, in, the, in, the, in the marketplace or in the public arena, then we all suffer. And, and frankly, you know, I am, as a Republican, as you know, Bruce, I was chairman of the Civil Service Board, and I worked very hard to keep the custodians on. And, oh, yeah. and, and <laughs> let me tell you something. You know, those were family wage jobs. Yes. You know, there is no breakage when it comes to helping human beings. Mm -hmm. You know, how can I look at somebody and say to them, well, you're a Democrat or you're a Republican, so I can help you, but I can't help you. That is, in my opinion some of the higher nature and the whole nation of public good has gone the way. You know, when you start talking about what it takes to create a public uh, uh, or a republic, which is a democratic process in our present structure, it requires for us to give up, give up our egos when we come to the public arena. Mm -hmm. 
it's almost like I've been married 30 some odd years. And you have to compromise with, I have to compromise with my wife. And sometimes she thinks I'm a knucklehead, which I am, but that's what she thought she could help this knucklehead, and I thank you so much for doing so, but you have to compromise. And I think when we get to the point we're in, it's my way or the highway, and that's why I'm so disappointed in, in Boehner you know, uh, my way or the highway, and then try to turn it back on Obama when that was your position. Mm -hmm. He was the guy who came to the middle. And what happened to uh, uh, the kind of this our discussion? And I think most of these people miss Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan would always acknowledge the middle ground. He woke from the middle high. That's and and there was time he raised taxes because it, it was the right season to raise the taxes. And when he when he could, he cut taxes. And I think the sad part about but that. But the is, point with him between him and and President Obama is that there was an acceptance of President Reagan compromise, but there's no exception whatsoever of President Obama's compromise. Well, I think I Why? think Why I, I, so? I think the country. Well, there might be an eth ethnic issue there. And, and more importantly, you know, you got a situation now where in money has entered the game at, at such, you know, high proportion. I remember, you know, one of the issues uh, that years ago that the Supreme Court always taught not being an activist court. That was always the discussion, you know, that the, that the, that the Warren Court was activist, and we don't want to do that no more. Well, the bottom line is when they made it possible for these various ways to have unlimited money in, in, in elections. That to me was very activist. I, you know, and I think it's wrong because guess what? Now you get guys who have uh, the, what's called the ultra rich, you know, not just the rich people, the ultra rich people can literally fund stuff for their own personal benefit and, if, and you can control media. And this is why this show is so valid to have these kind of discussions about what it takes to just have a discussion about how things occur, because it goes out there. The issue for us is, are we going to sit back and let money dictate? And, and that's kind of like what is happening. So therefore, let's, let's just say, in that respect, if you got money, you can say something. If you ain't got no money, shut up. And then don't we get back to that, that crisis, the reason why we, there had to be a union after the so-called Robert Barron class, the Rockefeller class, made it so difficult that the unions had to step up to create the middle class America. And I think, I think, do we take, does the pendulum swing all the way back? And I'm trying to keep that pendulum somewhere in between, you know, uh, middle right, middle yeah, left. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, another thing I want to I wanna throw out to you is that uh, there are just some facts for that matter. I, I, when I, I was reminded of the stimulus when the, in that whole argument and debate about the stimulus didn't do anything, et cetera, et cetera. And that I did my fact finding. And when you start thinking about the people, those clunkers, remember that clunker situation sure. came out? And when you look at and when you look at the number of quote Republicans <laughs> that picked up uh, picked up uh, new vehicles and turned in that so-called clunkers in and then all that kids the colleges got brand new vehicles and there's not, I mean that's as more Republicans got got that clunker so because you still have to go through the qualification piece you couldn't just go into a dealership if you didn't have the right credit score and all that other good stuff. So in all due respect, the, the average small business person, the small person, if you will, family person, couldn't, w couldn't qualify. And that was, that was a benefit, major benefit for that matter. And, um, and I don't know, you just keep everything that he's done. Now, now all of a sudden, you know, the, the health care bill, which is another issue. Uh, now, it's this president that said, okay, fine, send it, to the, send it to the Supreme Court and let them discuss this issue. It wasn't something that, that i.e., the other side, the president said, okay, send it up to the Supreme Court and let them discuss it and make a decision on it. Got me? Mm -hmm. With the understanding, he knows, he knows that the vote is not Democratic, if you will. There are more Republicans than Democrat on the piece. But he's saying, hey, let it, let it vet itself. Let it vet itself right to the public. And mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see the, the outcome of that situation. Well, I think one what do you think about that? Well, well, Any thoughts? I got two, but particularly, let's talk about his economic program. Okay. And it's his belief as President of the United States of America, he thought one of the biggest problems that he was being told was the rising health costs. Mm -hmm. So if we straighten out the health care issue, then now business can know what that is and we can begin to move. Uh, unfortunately, there were a lot of Democrats who didn't get on board for whatever reason. It was difficult 
It spent way too much time on that. That should have been a very up and down vote. Let's get this thing done and move on. But what happened was everybody was playing games with on the D side. Now, I don't understand Democratic politics that well, so I'm not going to try to be an, an expert in that area. Well, the, 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 the ensuing process was, because it never was explained well, the, 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 the Democrats did not do a good job of explaining the bill to the public. Normally, the president is not the one who sells it. Right, it's right, the individual right. folks who sell it. They were still, in a way, running away from him. Yeah. And so when I look at this situation at, at, the, at the midterm, I go like, wow. Hmm. So now, you, you, if, if he'd have maintained his peace, these other issues should have came on board. Because once that health care thing would have been taken care of, now you can start talking about, okay, let's, let's do other kind of stimulus. And frankly... The stimulus was not big enough. I don't That's care right. right. what they say, mm -hmm. it's wrong. Because the truth of the matter is, the economy was that bad. And he did not even really find out, or we didn't find out how bad it was until after the stimulus was already granted. If that would have been a case, it's just like when they went to Wall, uh, when Wall Street was having a problem with the banks, and they said, this is what it's going to take. And they said, they can solve the problem this way. When you miss uh, represent what it requires to move forward, then you're going to miss that mark. And I think that's what happened. So now when you start talking about now today, in retrospect, it looks pretty bad. I, but I, fundamentally, I kind of agree uh, with his plan as a, as a businessman, as a Republican. And as you said, the beneficiaries of this program were going to be uh, majority Republicans yeah, would have benefited yeah. the most. Oh, yeah. But guess what? There is, when others do, do well, we all do better. Yes. So therefore, yes. If, they, if, 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 if they start creating uh, opportunities, then begin. For, for two and a half or two and three quarter trillion dollars to be left with not being invested is insane. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Another thing I'd like to, I think that's, that's out there in the news today is the whole issue about the terrorist situation, the Al-Qaeda situation. I, I'm still reminded about the fact that as commander in chief, he wasn't given the credit, if you will, because he's, he's the one that has to sign off on, on anything. I mean, the whole, the whole issue with the Al-Qaeda thing and, and then not, not just recently the drone situation, they throw in the numbers and whatever, but the media, for some strange reason, are still trying to figure out, not giving him credit whatsoever as being president, but saying, well, it's the military, you know, it's our fine military, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, and then, and then along that same line, I remember when they first, when he first started running for office, that was quote, he's a Muslim, he's a Muslim. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, you know, you know, he's doing all this, this other situation from, from, from I, from a Muslim perspective, and you know, not, not an anti. It's just that it's a terrorist, right? Someone he's actually well, saying well, well, actually, these I, are the United I, States I, and know, people the, are trying the, to harm the, this the, country. The gentleman uh, had disavowed his allegiance to the country and became, in my opinion, um, 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 I'm just blocking the term, but uh, a seditionist. Seditionist. You know, he became a traitor. And, That's uh, a young man recently. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, uh, I have uh, problems. Uh, <laughs> my Muslim brothers forgive me. Just I get tongue-tied sometimes. But the issue for me is, is any time you go to another country and speak ill, of your country, you know, you can do that in China. <laughs> you can do it in Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, uh, so so I don't have a problem with that. I think I think that President ex exercised some leadership. But one of the candidates, Ron Paul, from Texas, a congressman, was concerned about that. The fact of the matter is, the person should have been given given free act, given a i.e. access to our legal justice system as opposed to being killed that way. Well, we know we, we, we know that every country have intelligence officers, uh, colloquial, unquote, unquote, spies. He just got caught in the spy game, that's all. He was playing the spy game, got caught. That's why I would say that, you know, um, if you're doing illegal things and you decide to play cops and robbers, there's a different set of rules for it when you're playing cops and robbers. If you're doing, going against the law, there's certain things will happen to you a little bit differently if you're a re re regular law-abiding citizen, um, which really brings the next piece to me. Um, I'm troubled by what happened in New York with those young people who were ex Wall Street. exercising their right yeah, to okay. protest the runaway uh, um, uh, um, 
uh, investment class, because I think they're a little bit different. I'm trying to think of a term. I don't even call them business. I'll call them investment banking class that have done unduly, have been doing extremely well while everybody else is not just hedge fund people, hedge fund people. And, and investment banking side of the equation now that they have the ability to actually own banks now it's just, you know no one really pays attention to what that really means in terms of how it impacts us on our day to day uh, I thought that was wrong for them people to be mazed you know what I mean I thought that was more. Ron Paul said nothing about that mm -hmm. so if you're going to talk about him then you need to talk about that now, I have a, I kind of like Ron Paul because I, he he represents a lot of my thinking when it comes to individual rights and the right of people to express themselves. Uh, I don't have a problem with um, alternative lifestyle people because that's their right. I would defend their right like I would defend anybody else's right. I don't have a problem with Hispanic people. They have a right just like everybody else has a right. And it goes down the line. So in that regard, I agree. But at some point, you you just can't blame government for everything yeah, right, because right. once again, like I said, go to Bangladesh. Okay. You know what? Another another area I'd like to. We only have about uh, about six minutes. But Jeez, I, always I, go so fast. I know, but we, but we need to we need to talk so about this piece. Sure. I'm thinking about the um, the prime minister from Israel. And that whole issue about the Palestinian peace aspect of it, and they say, "Hey, look, we want statehood," and um, and you know they've been trying to put that peace thing together for for years, for that matter, for decades, for that matter. It's never happened. And so anyway, the Palestinians went up and said, "Hey, look, we want statehood," and uh, and then I noticed that uh, right up front with you that uh, uh, early on uh, the, the prime minister from Israel was basically siding with the Republicans, you know, being uh, being quote anti. Anti, Which I uh, thought was very interesting. Yeah, I thought that was very and interesting. Matt, came and then, here, and then yeah. the same thing with the New York piece. That's right. That's right. When the, when the New York piece changed hand, if you will, uh, it was said straight up that you know, hey, uh, uh, it was a it was a Jewish effort. They were making a statement that they were anti Obama at the time. Yes. And then immediately after the Palestinian thing came up the deal, all of a sudden there's a the president of the United States on national, international TV saying, we are standing behind Israel, and this guy is standing right next door to him. I said, you got to be kidding me. Well, the, the, what, 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 the how, beauty what of politics, about the that beauty piece? of politics, and I just smiled, <laughs> is when strange bedfellows make love. Yes. <laughs> you couldn't have said and, and, and uh, that. Gene could have picked that up. <laughs> and, 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 that, and that's what that is, oh you know, strange God. bedfellows. And I think, I think we have to be realistic to say, you know, um, What's good for me is good for me, yes. and as long as you're right here next to me, yes. baby, it's cool. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. and, and but I think I, I understand what Obama was trying to do, and I, I think and I understand the Palestinian position, uh, and I understand the Israeli position. I, I, think, think, I, I think, think I think it's a very it's something that has to synthesize. Yes, you know you got to get these opposing yes. these the thesis and antithesis together and synthesize, and I think it's critical, you know, and I think there's a bigger burden between human defense posts. Uh, to some degree, um, uh, and I know some people will be upset that that Israel has to come along a little bit more and say, okay, yeah, yep. uh, you know, uh, let's get some some more assurances. Maybe we have to play a, a bigger role in, in ensuring that. Let's see what you're going to do, <laughs> because as long as you got this standoff, this 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 uh, this standoff, then no one can know who's going to do right by whom, and and frankly. Um, um, you got to give to get, and the guy who got more got to give up more, yeah. because that's the problem of America today. In fact, on that particular note, I make a prediction right now today <laughs> okay, that Dr. there Masai. will be a peace accord. Well, it has to be. I will. I can see President Obama standing on, on in the middle, and both of these guys shaking hands, said, "Hey, uh, there's a state in Palestine, and if you will, and then the idea is that they're just going to the annihilation of the Jewish community over there is not going to happen. It's inappropriate. It's, it's that's, inappropriate. That's, that's a bad thinking. And and for for once, we're going to have peace. And I and I. Uh, so I, so I thought that was kind of interesting that the election piece in New York, you know what I mean, and then the next thing you know, the prime minister is sitting there shaking hands and gladly, et cetera. It's almost like the Chris Christie situation. And here he was, he was calling, he was calling out, saying, "Where's the money for my people who are suffering, if you will, hand in hand with the president?" And then the next thing you know, they're trying to sue him, and there he's on national TV again, saying, "This guy can't do anything." What a deal! Well, you know, what was that? What, was, what about that? How'd you like that? Did the, you like the, that? Like I said, when lovers make love, it's strange <laughs> bedfellows. You know, um, um, I can I understand why people like Chrissy, um, and the question is, will he be seduced? 
and then uh, lose. Hadn't been vetted yet, though, Judge. No, no, no. But, I mean. Getting close. Well, the issue is not so much will he be seduced, because if he doesn't become seduced, he will remain governor yeah, of, right. of New Jersey and let it go. But if, if they seduce him, then he's he's in for a rough role, because I believe that, that, that you know, you've run for office and I've ran for yeah. office, unless you really feel... And, and frankly, as you know, you had to be talked into running for office, yeah. and I yeah. had to be talked into running yeah. for office. Yeah. You know, I, I was very resistant initially, and then one day I saw a thing, I said, well, if I don't do it, who will discuss yeah. the economic de the development of agenda, right. which became at some point very popular in our mm -hmm. community after mm -hmm. we, we were able to, uh, to, to bring that to the fore. So, so unless you really feel it, yep. and unless you're really prepared to mm -hmm. do it, mm -hmm. particularly at this time when you have... 24 hours news cycle, <laughs> man. I, I you know, uh, but I, I, I kind of like him because I kind of like the fact that, he that like you. You, well, <laughs> you like you, Jeff. Yeah. I, you know, I sent my kid to parochial school, so what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, Chad, this, this has been very, this has been enjoyable. I really appreciate it, and I, I'm sure that the uh, viewing audience uh, uh, appreciated the fact that this little update because, you know, I, when I think of, I think about the folks that are out there looking and. And feeling now, I can get a better feel of what's going on, and 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 like Gene said, yes, you, you know we're going to be doing this more often, and and hopefully I can get the, some of those other guys uh, to come out here and, and and be a part of this piece. Bob Bob's been here for quite some time, and I'd like to get his feels about this whole piece, and and also Gene, you know, and, and, and well, you know, the the one thing I'd like to say is is that we have back. to have to think, not react. Think, not react. And then be about what we think and do what we say and say what we do. Sounds great. On that particular note, as I said before, but I'm, I'm also including them in that piece now. As George Page and Chad Dedham says, <laughs> back to what you believe in. I'll see you next time around. Have a good one. <laughs> You're so